episode of the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Yehida. And I'm your host, Shelly. Today, we are going to be talking about a debut novel. Mm-hmm. And it is called Honey Girl by... It is called Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Do you want to start with a spoiler-free summary? Yes. Yeah, so I actually wrote one. And wait, are we going to... Are we going to address the elephant in the room? Mm. We can address it. Okay, so we did film this already. So this is going to be a little bit different because I think that what makes our podcast fun is that neither one of us ever know how the other one feels about the book. But we know. So, um, yes, it was already filmed. I'm so sorry. Our audio just kind of screwed up. So we're doing it again. And um, I'm but maybe we should guys... just not reveal it to the audience, mm, unless, you wanna, <laughs> unless you want to. Unless you want to just say it up front after your summary. No, no, that's fine. We can just hold it off on hold off on it. Okay. Um. Okay. So here is my spoiler free summary. Okay. Okay. Grace Porter is a perfectionist, and she is 28 years young <laughs> when she is celebrating her achievement of getting her PhD in astronomy. And the way that she's celebrating is by spending a really fun night in Vegas. But she ends up getting a little bit too drunk and wakes up with a ring on her finger. That's a good <laughs> summary. Oh, thank you. So if you're interested in that trope of accidentally uh, getting married in Vegas, um, (laughs) then we would recommend this. If you like sapphic stories, if you like coming of age stories, then we would recommend this story for you guys to read. And it's actually um, short, so it's not that long. Yeah. And we are about to spoil the hell out of this book. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't read it, go read it now and come back later. Or you can just stick with us. We'll try our best to... Um, explain it but we're not gonna do every detail in this story just the main points so why don't we start with our main character grace porter wait so like i I already something first oh Oh, yeah go ahead um i love the cover Mm -hmm. (laughs) i just wanted to say that i really like um (laughs) cartoonish covers when they actually draw the face yeah you've you've mentioned that before i forgot which book it was the drunk ones the drunk, drunk series ones? that we read, the drunk demon, oh, drunk werewolf. Oh yeah, 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 Kimberly Lemming. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Yeah, I don't know something about there not being faces on it. I used to like be okay with it. I think during Spanish Love Deception, I was like, ah, it's fine. And there was mm-hmm. one cover of the Hating Game that I was okay with. But then after a while, it gets kind of <laughs> old. Like I don't, I'm not really a fan of it. I think you're supposed to see yourself in them, you know, like put your face there. Yeah, probably. Um, I would agree with you, though. I'm not really a fan of the those types of covers, either like the hating game where they don't have a face or Spanish love deception. I really like this cover, too. I think it I mean, it gives no indication about what it's about. So that's always fun. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Um, yeah, let's start with our main character, who is Grace Porter. And like I said in the summary, she's a bit of, of she's a bit of a perfectionist. She is a Virgo. She's very much like very schedule oriented. So we start off the story with her waking up in a drunken haze and having slight recollections of, you know, marrying this really cute girl, but this mm-hmm. cute girl is already gone. And her best friends come in and they're like, wait, why aren't you ready yet? Because normally she would be the one who's the first one out, the first one to be ready, first one ready to get on the plane already. So this story is very much a journey with Grace Porter and her achievement of getting her PhD in astronomy, but slowly realizing that maybe that's not what she really wanted. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's a coming of age because she... (laughs) It's like she starts to spiral because uh, her dad is, what was he? He's like a medic in the military. Yes. And so she grew up in a very stringent way. Her, her parents are separated. So she grew up with her dad and he is very, very military, which you and I can't relate to. We can't relate to, you know, the military brat life. Uh, but we can relate to having, you know, parents with high expectations of us. So that was relatable. And because of... 
the high expectations of her dad, she worked herself to the ground. And so this is pretty much like her spiraling. Dude, it's kind of weird. Now sitting mm-hmm. with this story a little longer, it's mm-hmm. it's weird seeing a character that like I share a little too many like traits that I'm not proud of, like the whole type A mentality. Seeing that kind of mm. play out for her in like a negative way, I'm just like, oh, huh. I kind of, <laughs> I think I'm looking at a mirror like this isn't great, but it's, it's, uh-huh. it's weird to see because it's not what I expected at all out of this story for Grace mm-hmm. Porter to kind of go through this breakdown and mm-hmm. just kind no, of fall same. apart. Yeah, no, I agree. I didn't expect it either. Mm-hmm. I will say I, I feel a certain way about our main character. I, I don't mm-hmm. know if I necessarily like her. Her. and it, it's a shame because with the a good chunk of the book i would say like the beginning up until when the spiraling started i was mm. super into this book but i don't know it just it changed so quick and i don't think i was ready for that change because it wasn't what i expected out of this book i think the way that the story starts it makes it seem like At least for me, I thought what was going to happen was that, you know, she married this girl, kind of derailed her plans because she had always had her plan set on working at a certain company uh, because she's she lives in Portland and it was a company that her mentor had connections to. And when she had her interview there, it didn't go as planned and the people were not so very nice to her. And so it kind of like just threw off her entire life because you know she was definitely the type of person who would plan the next 10 years of her yeah, life yeah. so her having you know accidentally unexpectedly gotten married and not be accepted there it kind of just like shifted her perspective and I agree with you I feel like she was definitely I think she was meant to be unlikable because you know when she started to spiral she kind of just cut everyone off and it was definitely not nice because you know her best friends I appreciated how many friends she had because I feel like in a lot of these stories the main character doesn't really have friends it's just like maybe one and then the love interest but uh no Grace had a lot of friends and most of them were like like siblings to her so when she started to ice them out I got kind of turned off by her just because of the way that she did it. And especially the way that she just fucking stopped talking to Yuki, which was her wife. Yep. Uh, Yeah. I I was so like, (laughs) damn, if someone did this to me, I would not welcome them back into my life because she was just gone for months. I know what you mean. And I like the way you worded it the first time we filmed this, the first time we talked about this, you had said that this book was more enjoyable to you if you didn't view it as a book with a uh, getting married in Vegas trope, because that's actually so true, because that seems mm. not important at all. Um. Yeah. So what I had basically said was this story wasn't really a romance. It was more of a coming of age story because the romance itself just feels so background to everything that is happening to Grace's, you know, like mental health. And I think that I don't know. When I first read this, I was the same as you where I was feeling very disappointed with where the story was going. But I think near like the middle or maybe three fourths in, I kind of just accepted that this story really wasn't Mm. meant to have a strong romance. And so I just kind of focused more so on the family aspect and, you know, her relationship with her dad and her relationship with her mom Mm. and how she handled both of them. And how, you know, she grew as a person through the the two therapy or one therapy sessions that she had. Um, but after that, then I, I didn't dislike it as much as I would have had I just seen it through the lens of a romance book. I wish I would have done that. I wish I was as strong <laughs> as you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I do want to say, like, like we mentioned, the start of the story was very strong because with mm-hmm. the way that it was playing out with her having little pieces of her marriage like being remembered Mm -hmm. like little recollections i i genuinely thought that this story was going to be her and yuki living together with yuki being the one that's like okay 
let's try this out. But mm-hmm. Grace being like, nope, let's get a divorce. Let's get a divorce. You know, and you can just because be like, it's not part of her plan. But it's Sunday. Mm-hmm. No one gets divorces on Sunday. That's the Lord's Day. <laughs> oh, so true. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reason. I really wanted that. Like, that's what I wanted. I wanted to see like mm-hmm. a rom-com. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like you said, this cover doesn't really reveal much about what the story is going to be about. Mm -hmm. Besides just Grace having honey colored hair. Cute. Love that for her. (laughs) (laughs) All right. But you said that you didn't you didn't really like our our main character. I think I'm kind of the same as you when she reached her point of like spiraling. It's not Mm -hmm. that I I like hated her completely, but it just Mm -hmm. felt like she wasn't who she was at the beginning and i understand that when you go through something like that because she had a lot of um mental health problems Mm -hmm. it just felt so thrown in there like all of a sudden and i feel like if they had like made a bigger point about it i probably would have liked her more but the only time that it was ever mentioned with yuki was once and it was like in less than a paragraph Mm -hmm. so it really just threw me off and i i don't know and the thing is last time we filmed i told you i really liked yuki but i've been thinking about it she's (laughs) kind of nothing (laughs) that's what i said i literally said that i felt like yuki could have been anyone like she doesn't really have much of a development to her character besides her you know she has like a radio show Mm -hmm. um are you there And she talks to people this way. She can talk about anything she wants. And then she also is willing to go monster hunting, which I feel like could have been a cool concept if it was developed a little bit better. But they only brought it once, right? Yeah, like once or... Yeah, no, yeah, it was only... No, 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 twice. Because remember she said that that's why she was in Vegas Mm because like someone sent her a letter and they were like, oh, there's Mm -hmm. a monster in Vegas. So I think that that could have been cool. Because they were trying to show that Yuki is just so open-minded and whether or not she believes in these monsters is irrelevant, but she just wants to experience like what her listeners are experiencing in the, you know, in those moments in the letters. Yeah. I think that could have been cool. Like that could have really made her into a great character. But honestly, like I feel like she she really wasn't, like you said, anything like she was just so flat to me and even their love story was just so forgettable they only really had like a couple of moments and you said this last time is that annoying for us to say that you said this no because i feel like i feel like we're catching a friend up on tea (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. it's like you were there but you know the call got disconnected (laughs) um (laughs) so You mentioned before that you really appreciated the way that Yuki spoke because it was very like, what the fuck? Where did this like poetry come from? All of a sudden just dropped in here. And I still I still feel that way. I agree with you that the way that Yuki spoke sometimes was really cute, but it was kind of just like not enough. Like it was it was sporadically thrown in there. And what I would have liked to see was more conflict between them. Because they kind of both just accepted the fact that, oh, accidentally got married while I'm drunk. Also, isn't that not allowed? Isn't that? I don't know. Like, I feel like that's not allowed. You can't get married when you're drunk, right? Like, God, please tell me that's not allowed. I also hate how when Grace decided to run away from all of her problems and run to New York, which was where Yuki was at with her roommates. I hate that she pretty much didn't even do anything like she literally didn't even work new york is expensive okay this is unrealistic she was just mooching off of them like she didn't do anything and i i don't know like it just felt so out of character that is not the grace porter i know it's so funny because we we were reading through goodreads and story graph reviews of this book and when we were looking well, through the negative... When we filmed it last time, yes. Yeah. We, when we were looking through the negative reviews, uh, I saw a lot that were like, you're trying to make a relatable character who doesn't pay rent. Like, that's <laughs> that's what everyone does. <laughs> like, you can't have her not pay rent. Mm-hmm. Especially in New York. I just want to emphasize mm-hmm. that. Please. And it feels kind of like I know it was supposed to be her like, oh, my gosh, this is so new to me. I can't believe I'm doing this and lying Who to my dad I? about it. Mm-hmm. 
but it i don't know it went by so quick <laughs> and then she left quick. and ghosted her quick i thought she was there forever i was like where when is something gonna <laughs> happen in this plot when oh my god and then remember that raj showed up Yes, because Raj is like is like her brother, and he was like, "Hey, I'm here because of a family business thing, and they went out to drink to a bar, and Yuki didn't go. I don't know why Yuki didn't go. It felt kind of, I don't yeah. know, a little weird. But anyway, they were catching up, and he kind of just went off on her. He was like, "All you mm-hmm. ever do is run away from your problems," because he was a little bit jealous that he doesn't get to do that. He doesn't have the luxury to do that. And he was like, and you you had the opportunity to major in whatever you wanted, study whatever you wanted, and you still ended up unhappy with what you decided yep. to do. And what was my point with that? Oh, my well, point is, you, is you that have... what that was what moved the plot forward, kind of. Yeah. And you had told me that you liked that someone had said that to her. Yes. And you're right. I did somebody like needed to because someone had to. But you, at the same you, time. You had said that it felt kind of random like you you were like why is he here yeah because he had never really been talked about much at all he was right yes he was mentioned but it wasn't like like, oh my god my boy raj the one who screams at me every tuesday wednesdays and fridays (laughs) no they were super close because of their is it the tea thing the tea business the the tea thing yes the tea thing Mm -hmm. the tea but also the tea exactly I it felt weird because it felt like he was only brought up to that point because they needed someone to say it to her <laughs> that was like not biased with her relationship. Because I'm you know surprised I mean? that I'm surprised that she hadn't thought about this before because she was in New York for what felt like forever for a couple mm-hmm. months. And mm-hmm. you telling me that nobody had told her, "Hey, mm, don't you think it's a little a bit much now?" Kind of feels like you're avoiding your life because she wasn't looking for any jobs or anything. She was just in New York just to be there. It was also kind of messed up of Yuki, who kind of expected Grace to just give up her life and move in with her. Like, Mm -hmm. I get it. Grace was there forever. And it was like, okay, I get it. You're my wife. I did tell you to come visit, but I thought it was only going to be for a week and not four months. (laughs) But Uh it felt so wrong to me that when grace kind of revealed to yuki that she had been self-harming and yuki just goes like oh you're hurting yourself and immediately after she says that goes like what so you never considered living with me then and it's like she (laughs) you just revealed something that needs more attention than Mm -hmm. your living situation and she just completely bypassed that yeah, and I don't even think she brings it up again when she sees her. No, she doesn't, which is so weird because obviously she knows that her wife was struggling with her mental health and she never asked her about it. Yeah, w- when they see each other again, it's not until the end of the book and Yuki literally goes like, I'm here, but I'm still mad. But did you mean it though, babe? Like, did you mean it? Did you mean what you said? Want me back? Like, want me back by... Oh God, who's that singer? I was thinking of the song. Uh, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, and I I feel like the way that mental health was addressed in this book just wasn't that great. I mean, I do appreciate that Grace does end up going to therapy, and t- she is trying to work on herself. I just kind of yeah. wish that she wouldn't have just ignored her wife because, mm-hmm. you know supposedly they had a great time in new york and all of a sudden now she's like never mind i'm gonna go with my mom instead which she lives in florida but then also with agnes because agnes also had a lot of mental health problems and agnes was one of grace's friends I, I, i don't know like i think that the way that it was discussed just wasn't really in a positive way it was just kind of like yep, yep she has bpd yep okay anyway but she's and lovable like you had mentioned too she only went to two therapy sessions yeah and that just kind of fixed her life which i'm not saying that i wanted her to have like a million but at least like let's pretend that she did um it would have also been okay if this had ended more with like them not completely being together mm-hmm. like if they had just divorced but been like hey 
are you free Saturday? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that would have been cute because then they would have actually been like, okay, you know what? Yes, let's divorce, but let's like go on a date. Or even hey, if, are even you if free? I'm single. <laughs> or even if they did stay married, it should have at least mm-hmm. ended with them being like, so, um, do you want to go to a restaurant or like the yeah. park, go for a picnic, like something? Mm hmm. That would have been amazing. But it wasn't that. It was <laughs> a lot. It was so much family stuff. And you're right. It is It is kind of nice to see a character who's able to stand up to parents who expect too much out of you. Mm-hmm. Um, it is very relatable to a lot of people. So I like that even though she did stand up to her dad, I guess, and kind of speak her mind. I like that it didn't immediately like change the way the dad was. Like he wasn't immediately yeah. like, oh my gosh, sweetie, you're right. I'm going to be more careful about that because that's not how parents actually are. No, you know, it takes and- time, but you can tell that he cared enough and he cared in his own way. I think that that was something that kept me going. I don't know what it is, but I really felt for her and her relationship with her dad because her dad. Also, the fact that they didn't even call her Grace. They just call her by her last name, Porter. Yeah. And I got so annoyed by the repetition of well, that's just what the porters do. You know, that's the porter way. And it's just like, okay, I get it. You're military, but goddamn, like, okay. Do you have any other personality trait? Mm -hmm. But I do like that relationship between her and her dad and how near the end of the story, we just come to realize that her dad was so hard on her because he wanted her to work hard. And he felt very, I guess, worried for her because he wanted her to follow in his footsteps and, in his footsteps and go through like the medical field because he had so many connections and he would have been able to help her that way but when he was at her graduation and he saw that you know she was getting her phd in astronomy and he saw that she was the only black girl there he was like wow she's really alone because now he can't help her he doesn't have any connections in that field and that's kind of what had like a rift between them but she didn't know that and i don't know like i just i like the conversation that it was trying to have i just Mm -hmm. i don't know i I just wish that it was a little bit stronger because even at the end she doesn't ever tell her dad that she's married like never and then it ends with them being like okay let's have dinner tomorrow at this time or lunch or whatever and yeah yeah, like you're just left with the idea or the hope that okay they're gonna both come clean in this or she's gonna come clean and he's gonna accept her and love her and everything's gonna be okay and Mm -hmm. he's gonna call her grace i think i don't know yeah i i don't know even though this was handled in a very real way with the parents it also really didn't matter to me because i was already like uh, out of it by Mm -hmm. the end yeah what i didn't mention the first time (laughs) is that when i was listening to this the first time and i got to the part where she's at her mom's wedding and she's giving a speech that that shit made me cry. <laughs> Wait, what? You cried? Yeah, I cried because <laughs> I thought it was very sweet that someone who, you know, isn't used to being the center of attention, attention or a public speaker went up there and was like making people laugh. And just it was really sweet <laughs> that she mentioned that, like, you know what? My mom ain't perfect. What a weird thing to mention at a wedding. I know. You know, you know this that's, bitch. That's... She ain't perfect. But she made I me cry. Really you know what? Sweet. This bitch left me. Did you guys know that? She fucking left me. <laughs> it was really with funny that bitch over there. <laughs> Point at her. Dad. I was, I was in the podcast room when uh, I was reading this because uh-huh. I needed, I needed a long table, and my sister was sitting across from me reading a book, and I had my AirPods in, and I was listening to the audiobook. And when it got to that point, she just looked up at me and you could just see tears in my eyes. And I was like, <laughs> wait, for real? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> that, I, that I don't know why I forgot about that. That doesn't even make any sense. Because when we talked about her mom and the wedding and everything, you were like, I didn't care about it. And I said, no, I thought it was actually kind of cute. Like, I thought it was sweet that yeah, her mom, I didn't care about it. Her, <laughs> like, her I, stepdad or whatever had asked her to you know officiate the wedding like i thought that was really cute i don't know why i forgot to tell you i think it was because the whole thing kind of turned me off as a book 
Mm. That I just forgot to mention that. But I did like her 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 speech. speech. Okay. No, yeah, I thought I thought that whole moment was cute. And then I wasn't really sure how her and Yuki were gonna come back together. I had a feeling it would be at the wedding, but I really I thought she would show up sooner. Yeah, but you know. I really hoped that um she would have just invited her. Cause I hated that whole thing of her leaving a, a voice note for her. Because really? I f- yeah, because I felt like her and Yuki never really had like a a deep conversation together, like like in front oh, of each yeah. other. Because a lot oh, yeah. of their relationship relied, well, in the beginning, was through phone calls. And then she would listen to Yuki's radio show. And so Yuki would, I guess her conversations would obviously be directed at her wife. Um, and then at the end, when Grace was like, ah, you know what, I feel so bad for just leaving, for just ghosting her. So she decided to be vulnerable and she made a, a voice note for her where she just mm-hmm. was like i'm sorry i'm not perfect and i'm trying and i don't know what she said but yeah i just but, i just wish that they would have had like an actual moment together where they could have said it or she could have said it in front of her it kind of sucks too because on yuki's radio show mm-hmm. she has this thing where she repeats hey are you there mm-hmm. and she's speaking to the audience but there is a point where Grace is like, oh, but it feels like you're like looking for someone like you're lonely and yeah. you just want to make sure like someone's listening to you. Uh-huh. And I like the idea of that. Mm-hmm. But because it wasn't really like they didn't delve deeper into it. It just kind of didn't hit. You know what I mean? Because I feel <laughs> really? like the idea of that would have hit more um, when Grace sent that audio note because she started it the same way. And mm. I don't know. I felt like that's what they okay. wanted, but nah. Yeah, no, you know what? I agree with you. It could have been something really cute because of, you know, the parallel. But I don't know. It just mm-hmm. had they had they actually had, you know, meaningful conversations together, and this would have just been like one of one of the few times that they were honest with each other, not you know, yeah. not in front of each other, then maybe it would have been better, but no, I I, I don't like that. Do you remember the context? Because I remember the line. I just don't remember why they said it. Where Yuki was talking to Grace and Yuki's like, you know what? You you mentioned monsters, but you like me and I'm a monster. Do you remember that? So, yes, I do remember that. So basically, oh, well, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. Let me, let me say what I think you're trying to talk about. So when she was hunting monsters, Grace was there with her and all of um, Yuki's roommates. And Grace was kind of like, why are we here? Like, it's kind of weird that you're hunting something that is obviously not real. And Yuki got kind of upset with her. And she was like, well, I mean, you believe in the stars and all that. And, you know, space and whatever. um, It would have been funny if she was like, and that the earth is round. (laughs) uh You dumb bitch. (laughs) If it's round, why can't I see my shadow? <laughs> yeah, try to try to give me an answer to that, space scientist. <laughs> that would have been real, dude. That would have been so funny. I would have hated that, but yes. Um, <laughs> so when Grace ends up ghosting her, the last message that Yuki sends her is, "I know you said you didn't believe in monsters, but I didn't think that you wouldn't believe in me." Was oh, that what you were trying to say? Yes. Yeah, so that was the last message that that was the last message that Yuki had sent her before, you know, she was gone for months or however long she was gone for. Oh god, I hate that. Same. I I just can't believe she did that. Like (laughs) because she did she did send a message to her friends because she ghosted her friends as well, but eventually Maybe like a week later, she was like, hey, guys, working on myself. We'll reach out once I'm better. But she never did that for Yuki. You know, her wife. Crazy. Yeah, because, yeah, I would have completely understood if Yuki didn't show up at the wedding. Do you want to talk about how that happened? Like that moment of when they finally see each other again? Well, it was because um, that audio message that Grace had sent was basically like, hey, I told Mr. Astronomer that I would like to look for positions in New York. And, you know, if you're still available, wife, I would like to talk to you again. And she was basically like trying to reconcile. Mm 
Mm-hmm. How did she show up though? Like, how did Yuki know? Um, I think one of her friends reached out to her. No, like one of Grace's friends. Well, that would make sense. I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I can't remember which friend though. But she does show up there at the very end of the wedding. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. They just talk to each other. And Yuki mentions that she's angry, but she also loves her. And, like she's not oh, yeah. angry enough. Yes. Also, with the whole love thing, um, Grace had brought that up to her friend group. Like, yeah, this my wife who n- I maybe love. And everyone was shocked. But she was like, you know what? I should have admitted it sooner. I kind of wish that she had been admitting it throughout the story, though. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it felt like after she ghosted her wife, she never even brought her wife up in conversation. Or with the therapist or with the friends or with the... I think she did mention her her to her mom. But that was literally it. For a while there, I forgot she was even married. Because, like, she was never brought up again. And you mentioned this before, and I totally didn't even notice, but her I don't think her dad even knew that she was no. married. No, her dad never finds out. She never tells him because I'm assuming that he, she's going to tell him when they have their lunch or dinner or whatever that happens off screen. And I don't want to I don't want to come for this author. I really don't. Mm-hmm. But is this book marketed as a romance? Um, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I should look it up. So the genres does say romance novel, coming of age story, and lesbian literature. I guess her summary does kind of put it the way it is. What, with the romance? Yeah. It mentions like, yeah, she got married, but she's dealing with all of this other life. She's going to feel burnout. She flees from home with the wife she barely knows, but reality comes crashing in. Which is, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like Yuki shouldn't have been put there as like a placeholder. This could have just <laughs> been a uh, coming of age without a wife. You know what I mean? Or maybe with the wife, but like have your divorce or have your realistic problems. Like that would have it been so much been, more enjoyable. It kind of would have been interesting to see her dealing with the stresses of getting a divorce, but that being more tolerable than what she's going through. You know, because at least with like this wife that she barely knows, it's someone who's actually willing to communicate to her and not the people who are supposed to be there for her. Like it would have been a good eye opener and like a a moment to reflect for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. There were so much like possibilities or sorry, there were so many opportunities that this book could have taken. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, It fell short. I did want to bring something up that I didn't like that happened in this book. So that moment when she is with Raj and they're at the bar and he's telling her, you just run away from your problems and all that. Um, They kind of do that thing where, you know how in movies or in books, when they say something that's just kind of like convenient for you to know about the plot. Where it's Mm -hmm. like, hey, big brother, that's traumatized because you had a car accident or you were in a car accident when you were five years old. How are you doing? (laughs) Like, you know, like those moments. Yes. Yes. It kind of did that. Not as not as extreme, obviously, but um, let's see. I got that with mentioning him being a business major. Yeah, I can't find it, but it was like. He asked her, do you know why I chose this? Or do you know what I wanted to be or something? I don't know, something like that. And she was like, you're a business major, Raj. And it's like, you would obviously know that. I don't know. Like, you would know that if you call this guy your brother. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I crazy? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, just the way that that was shown, I didn't really like. And I know that it happened another time, that, but that other time I didn't highlight it. Because I was kind of like, okay, well, maybe it's just that one time. Yeah, dude, it is a little annoying. I feel like the author probably just wanted to mention it. Mm -hmm. But do you think it sounded awkward? Yeah, I did. That's why I highlighted it because I thought it was, Mm -hmm. whoa, it took me out of the story for a second. Yeah. Damn, dude. But I mean, overall, I I don't think that this is like a bad debut novel or anything like that. I just feel like it should have been marketed as 
as a coming of age story alone with like a mm-hmm. sprinkle of romance or maybe just make the romance better because I just feel like the relationship between her and Yuki was just so forgettable. She does write dialogue really well, but what <laughs> but what they were saying to each other wasn't that great. But like, I don't know. I like the writing in the story. It didn't bother me at all. It was just the story, which I don't know if that's a co- that felt like a backhanded compliment. Yeah, I think it I was. love that you know how to write words, but like maybe write better ones. <laughs> oh my god! I love <laughs> I that you own a thesaurus. We can all Google words, but you Google them better. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No, I I feel bad because I did really want to like this book. And when I realized that I wasn't going to, I did feel disappointed. Mm, But you realized it when she was spiraling, right? Yeah. When did you realize? Um, I think probably the same time when she was in New York for the longest time. I was kind of just like, wait, where the fuck is this story going? I thought Mm -hmm. I just expected like more conflict between her and Yuki. And I also kind of hated that their first fight was over whether or not monsters are real. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. It should have been something (laughs) else. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Yuki was also kind of painted as a person who doesn't take things seriously. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, works at a diner and she just goes with the flow. Mm -hmm. Yes. She goes with the flow, but I hate, yeah, because that whole fight kind of makes it seem as if she's childish. And I don't yeah, really like that. Yeah, she's just quirky and she's just the fun one. And Grace is just the super serious one. I hate that because I feel like you that can work worked. at a diner and like Monster Hunters. Or sorry, being a Monster Hunter. <laughs> I feel like she could have been that but still had very mature thoughts. But she didn't. She was yeah. so flat. <laughs> yeah. They just treated her as the character that was like, but why not? You know? Yeah, like, like I didn't want that. Expand the possibilities. I yeah. mean, like I said, it could have worked if it was developed better. Yeah. I like the idea of the the fact that Grace had stars in her room. The green glowing stars. Oh, my God. I love that part. I thought that was so sweet. Because she just, you know, loves stars. Yeah. I also <laughs> I also such a small part to like. No, but I also love that uh she had so many like pet names. Like Honey yeah. Girl, Star Girl, um what was the other one? There was Hella. <laughs> oh, wife. <laughs> wife girl. <laughs> no, I there was another one that I really liked, um, uh, but my mind is blinking. But yeah, I really liked all of the pet names that she had because I I wasn't a huge fan that everyone called her porter just because you know yeah the the way that it reflected of her upbringing shout out to grace's friends they were really the real ones (laughs) no yeah (laughs) they were that sooner and i or you had mentioned that before when we filmed this the first time so i did want to mention it again that the fact that they stuck with her after being ghosted for three months is crazy was it three months well, was it three months? I felt like it was a while. I don't remember. Um, because I think no. Oh my god, I'm trying to do math. Okay, she's a Virgo, so I think her birthday <laughs> is August, the end of August. Okay. When did her mom get married? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was at least a month, right? That's a long time, though. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. But to not he- no to not hear angry. from your wife and the your thing wife is, oh but even like the friends like the fact that none um, of them were she, mad at her she ghosted yeah but you had mentioned too that she had written to them too and was like hey i'm going offline off the grid yeah. you know uh-huh. i feel like if if you had done that to me or if i had done that to you we still would have figured out a way to talk to each other. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, girl, I would hunt you down. I would I would be <laughs> over there. So it's weird to me that no one did that for her. They were just kind of like, "Oh, she needs it." She, she just needs, needs it. me time. It's okay. I I feel like if someone were to do that, that just seems so serious, right? Like, "Oh my god, you must be going through something really serious." So let me just go and let you know, "Hey, I'm here for you if you need me." Mm-hmm. Because I think she turned off her phone and hid it away in a drawer which is crazy 
because damn yeah. you really you really are off the grid um yeah so I, is she I still think, paying for that phone bill these are important questions oh my god you're so right wait hold on <laughs> if you don't use your phone do you still get charged yes you do um but i also wish that at least one of her friends was a little bit upset with her when she finally did allow them back into her life. Like, I think it would have been realistic if one of them was like kind of giving her the cold shoulder or something, because how are you, how are you not? Cause also keep in mind her friends had their own issues too. So it wasn't like she was hitting them up like, Hey, I know that I'm going through this, but how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I hate it because there was a point where Grace mentioned, she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a great friend. Mm -hmm. And that could have been a moment of them talking. But all of her friends were like, no, you're the best. You're literally, you know, Olivia, our other friend we don't talk about. Fuck her. (laughs) She's out of the group. It's you now. She's cut off. (laughs) Oh, my God. You just reminded me. That also reminds (laughs) me. When she mentions to her friends that she just ghosts her wife, they were all kind of just like, no, I mean, it's OK. Like, I, you know what? You're going through it. It's fine. Because Grace tells them, I know I'm a bad person for just leaving like the way yeah. the way that I did. But they were also like, no way. You needed to work no on way. yourself, which is, yes, in part, it's true. But you could have at least said something to her it's also a little worrisome like if you had told me if you yahira Mm -hmm. had told me you know what going to vegas you come back and i'm like hey how you doing and you're like married you know it's our honeymoon right now i'm gonna (laughs) leave for two months and you were to go and do what you do come back and be like i ghosted them i don't even know where i would begin with that conversation (laughs) like you don't just leave that Because that Mm -hmm. feels like something's going on with that person. That's not something someone does Mm -hmm. just out of nowhere. Mostly us and her who are very work oriented. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, like that. That just seems like you're really going through something serious. And as their friends, they should have been more, I don't know, more worried, I guess. (laughs) I think we should talk about our overall thoughts. Okay. So my overall thoughts of Honey Girl was that I feel like I was enjoying the beginning of it. I liked Grace Porter, like the way that her character was starting. But once the story started to shift with just her spiraling, which is relatable, but I don't think it was handled very well. I don't think that her mental health was handled well either, like the discussions or anything, because at one point it just kind of felt like, okay I'm better you know like I don't know it yep. it could have been so much more and I didn't like the way that her relationship with Yuki was handled either the relationship itself just felt very flat I did enjoy the conversation that it tried to have with you know the parents um, I feel like overall that was like the saving grace because I was really interested in like where where that was going but I hate that she never told her dad because of how important her dad was to her life, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. I think once I told myself, hey, you know what? Maybe stop seeing this in the lens of a romance. I didn't hate it as much as I would have had I been like super rooting for the pair. But sitting with this now, because keep in mind, when we filmed this, I had just finished reading the book. Um, yes. But sitting with this book for as long as I have now, I think that I would give it like a 2.25. What did you give it last time? I gave it like a 3.25 only because I, I really liked her relationship with her dad and her mom. And for the most part, I also liked how she had strong relationships with her friends. But I also didn't. I don't know. It's It's weird because now discussing it with you, I didn't like how her friends were just like unrealistically okay with her falling off the face of the earth, you know? I don't know. It's just, yep. and then also the way that mental health was addressed, I didn't like that either. So I just, yeah, I think I would give it a 2.25, maybe even a two. Dude, I, I don't know. I agree with you that like after reading this book, I felt like I had stronger feelings for it, mm-hmm. but like sitting with it, you realize that it is unrealistic. And I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't look at it in a lens of a coming coming of age story. Because <laughs> yeah. 
I feel like it would have been more of a coming of age story if she hadn't actually just stayed with her wife at the end. Like if her wife had just been like not mentioned, mm-hmm. but she was there. Her wife. Well, was I there. mean, her wife wasn't really mentioned near the end of the story. And well, until the very end of the until story, Until the end of the story. Mm-hmm. I hated that she was, though. I feel like this story could have been something else because having this romance thing, I guess this very little romance plus Mm. the other plot that could have been just two separate stories and i don't know i don't think it was executed well with the whole vegas marriage Mm -hmm. and you're you're right about just the way that everyone else dealt with her mental health issues made me so angry and the fact that she only had two therapy sessions and already was doing so much better it's like not that quick it's not and she had a lot so a lot to unpack I, yeah i it did not like this story and i really wish i did but i think i'm gonna give it a one out of five yeah that's fair i get it <sighs> but oh I'm wow sad. i feel like a weight has lifted <laughs> <laughs> i you know i was really sad when our audio got corrupted because i felt like i was too i don't know i felt like i i liked our conversation when what the too. first time we had it but i feel like we had a much better conversation this time i will admit that when we were filming that <laughs> i was tired as fuck i'm okay now were so you? i think i mm. think we did have a really good conversation now i feel like we said more <laughs> We were more coherent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's, keep in mind, I had just finished the book. So I felt like I, I don't know. I felt like I was still unsure of about certain feelings, you know, of Ooh. the things that happened. But overall, I mean, I still kind of felt the same. Just now I've, you know, stay with it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. I do want to say thank you to anyone who's listening to us in audio form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can leave a review and a rating of five stars, because that does make a huge difference for us. Thank you to everyone who has already done that. You're mm-hmm. so sweet. Yeah, I think it, it I think it definitely helps us a lot because I feel like we've been recommended more to people because there's definitely been like an influx of listeners that we've had recently and no pressure but if you want to go the extra mile and tell your friends families and loved ones and hated ones about us Mm -hmm. that would be amazing because the best type of exposure is through word of mouth and if you are watching us on youtube thank you so much if you can like comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell we usually post on tuesdays and thursdays unless life happens unless the wanna... audio just gets corrupted for no reason <laughs> if you want to go the extra mile go the distance by hercules written oh by my hercules. god i love that song <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us and support us on patreon mm-hmm. we recently made it and we are new with it but we do want to form a community of readers and yeah it'd be th- really great i think you could w- support I think it would be really fun because we are planning on having exclusive content on there and then expanding more on the stories that we have discussed. And mm. yeah, there's just so many things that we want to do on Patreon and we also want to get more connected with our listeners. So no pressure or anything, but it would be amazing if you guys did head over to patreon.com slash book fix. Thank you. If you also want to support us on social media, we do have an Instagram. It is at the book fix pod, T-H-E-B-O-O-K-F-I-X-P-O-D. Or you can go on TikTok and support us there on the book fix, T-H-E-B-O-O-K-F-I-X. So usually at the end of episodes, we roll a dice. It's um, a digital one that Yahira has an app for. And if she gets an even number, we read a positive review of the story. But if she gets an odd number, we read a negative review of the story. And after the review is read, we don't say anything about it. We just let it go. We're not connected to it. Feel a certain way about it. Nothing. We just leave it in the air. Mm-hmm. So why don't you roll? Well, the actually, dice? we um, will be discussing these reviews on our Patreon. So oh, if you're interested you're right. on hearing our thoughts. <laughs> That's one way to do it. (laughs) 
Um, okay, we got a four. A four even. So I'm going to pick a five-star review. Just to let you know, this book mostly got four stars. Oh, In total, wow. it had a 3.72. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and read a five-star Okay. This review is written by Warda, who gave it five out of five stars, and she wrote, I love this book so much it hurts. It's a story that is so incredibly sad and lonely, and my melancholic self latched on. I don't even think I can review it. I cried buckets. My head hurts. I guess the only... And I guess one only really cries from reading a story because it triggers something fundamental within them, a core that they've been seeking out and they find it within a story. And this story was it. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you later. Bye. Bye. I don't even know what to talk about. <laughs> so what, um, we just ending this? Um, <laughs> next week, I guess. See you next week. What can we, re- can we, okay. The real episode starts now because these infinite threads is out and we're here. <gasps> Dude. <laughs> and it's not here though, in my hands. It isn't. Wait, let me look. No, it's still not. No, here. it's still not here. Um, it's it's really, really sad because I pre-ordered it. So I thought pre-ordering meant that they would ship it to me before it was released for everyone else. Like or at least it would get to me when it was released to everybody else like this isn't fair i could have just gone to barnes and noble i could have just gone to barnes (laughs) didn't you receive a book that you ordered for the release date like earlier one um queen of myth and monster i don't yeah well i don't know if it was early earlier than the release but it was earlier than the day they had told me i would get it yeah which is always oh a God. plus. So the fact that this didn't happen for Infinite Threads is so heartbreaking. I am sad. Everyone, please send me hearts. Thank you. <laughs> please send me hearts. I think I'm going to get through this. I'm hoping to get through this. Don't worry. Don't cry too much, though, because it should be arriving tomorrow. Fingers Dude, crossed. I went, I went to Well, actually, today, today when you're listening to this, actually. Wait, just kidding. Oh, Jake. you're right. I went to Target today, which I guess is yesterday for the listeners. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there. So wish me luck tomorrow. I'm actually just thinking of buying the ebook, but I don't know. I want the physical copies in my hands right now. <laughs> All right, let's go shopping. Okay, let's go. <laughs>